All right. Hello again, everybody. I apologize if I get a little quiet today. I have been uh, recently getting over being sick and uh, already bringing my voice. Also, I apologize for uh, those ass rash of changing scenes and everything. Uh, there's something going on in tablet. My Streamlabs deck just does not want to cooperate right now. Um, might give it one more shot to, to fix it because it, it is quite useful when it works. <clears throat> yeah, no. Um, my transition button just does not want to work. You can use it for chat, but that's about it. All right. Thank you guys so much for being here, and I apologize for uh, not being present to thank those of you who followed. And I appreciate every last one of you that does. So today we are flying on air. Um, and I love on air. But we're gonna we're gonna have some opinions today. I hope you guys are ready for that. Um, also I've started a community goal to fly with no HOTUS. It's not easy, but I have done it in both Sims. I will hate it. But if you guys want to see me do it for the memes, uh, you can go ahead and donate points to that. It runs for a month. Uh, I will try to figure out how to continue it after that month. So if if you don't get the community goal finished, it will happen eventually, right? Even if it's only one person who wants to see it, it will happen eventually. Um, I'm also looking into a little edition called Stream Captain. Unfortunately, I was not able to get all the research done in time to launch it today. But I'm hoping either tomorrow or Friday I'll have it ready. So, we are leaving Denver today and heading to Vancouver. Let's start getting this plane set up, shall we? Uh, we're already connected to On Air. <clears throat> now, when I talk about on air, so what is on air? On air is what what on air is not is like an ATC program or anything like that. It, it's a network only in the strictest sense of the word. So basically, what it does is it monitors your flight telemetry to make sure that you're not doing something that's incredibly stupid, like flying a 747 upside down. Um, it gives you points for that. It makes sure that you are able to fly from your from your uh, departure to your destination. It monitors how safely you land. And uh, basically you take on cargo or passengers. You fly them from point A to point B, you drop them off, you get paid. Uh, you have to pay for, you have to either rent or buy your aircraft. You have to pay for fuel. You have to pay for, um, <clears throat> pardon me, you have to pay for fuel, you have to pay for landing fees, you have to pay for um, basically anything that you would have to pay for in the real world, minus some, some big notables like slot fees and stuff like that. You, you don't have to pay for things like that, but but you know if you leave your aircraft parked at, a, at an airport, yes, you have to pay for the parking fee. Um, Generally speaking, the parking fees that are much lower than they are in the real world. Uh, at least I think... I don't know because I don't operate an airline in the real world. However, um, today, ironically, we're flying a stupid leg uh, because we are going back to Vancouver and we have nothing on board. I know that that's not ideal. It's not fun. Um, one of the problems that I have with it honestly but let's let's go ahead and start getting this airplane turned on shall we um get our procedures going okay so we're gonna start with batteries one and two on ground control the ground recorder hope my flight goes well thank you so much vipers i appreciate it so much uh i'm sure it will um Unfortunately, it's kind of a stupid flight, but what can you do? All right, so all fuel pumps off. My fuel will already be loaded by on-air. 
because it sets it to how much I down I uh, paid to put in, and if I move it, it will disconnect. Me. Uh, what it does not do, however, is set up my weight. I don't know why it doesn't, because you they have the excuse in Microsoft Flight as to why they can't do that because it's new, they don't really have access to everything from the front end or from, from the back end so they can't really inject weights yet there's no excuse for why they can't inject uh, weight data in X-Plane 11 it's absolutely doable uh, 42 point tons wait alright so that's our weight. Um, fuel is loaded. AP fire test. I'm gonna get this bad boy started. And while I'm waiting for that flap to open, let's go ahead and turn up up our ND and PFD. Now you might notice today we are going to have some more realistic uh, sounds. And we have that's because I downloaded I, I actually paid for a new XP realistic so also the head bob is going to be a little better there, there's a whole bunch of new stuff uh, okay AP master AP uh, starts I fit lights make these that's what I was oh and while I'm doing that I'm just going to get a deers aligning As those take forever. They take like eight or nine minutes to align. Okay. Uh, all of them starting to align. I put lights and mictus. All right. Flaps lever. Get zero. Brown spoilers retracted. Uh, probe and window heat. APU bleed on. External power off. Air conditioning panel, no white. Cross bleed set auto. Um, air conditioner temperature, I'm not going to worry about it. We have literally nobody flying. Backflow will be low. All right, moving up here. Uh, generator one and two fault lights are on. And everything is dark otherwise. Our ventilation system is all dark. Uh, external power is off. All right. Now our pre-flight procedures. The deers are aligning. We're going to turn on some lighting. Fly with system two today on our nav and logo lights. All our external and internal lights are on, except for those that indicate that the engine is running. Um... <clears throat> Interior lights, I'm going to turn off the dome light. It is stupid. I don't know why it spawns me with that on. Um, okay, landing elevation set auto. Anti-ice is not required. Um, now we've already checked out the air conditioning and electric panels. Now we're going to turn on our pumps. Fuel pumps. I'm going to test our fire suppression system in engine 1 and engine 2. We're going to turn on our third, second, and first radio. And then we're going to start setting up our MCDU. Alright. We're going to look at our GPS monitor on this one and... Our initialization on this one, we're going from K Den to CYVR. Our flight number is going to be BNA 5108. We are flying for Buana Air. All right, and we are at 3951.2 north. And 10440.7. Well, okay, our cost index today, as given to me by Simbrief, is going to be 46. At least it's not 5. 
cruise flight level. Probably going to be 390, but let's check it out here. Fun. Oh, only 300. That's weird. Very strange. Okay. And request. And you guys will have to let me know if, like, the music's too loud or anything. Um. Alright, from Caden. Departure. Two, five. And we're not a Sid. Why, but we're not. By VR, our arrival. I remember correctly. And a different. I'm gonna do LS or six left. And then I'll look for as the people. It definitely did not have this. Alright. Here's what we're going to do. Set up the majority of this flight. Alright. Romeo Leaf. Ball. Delta Bravo Sierra. Alpha Echo Golf. Now I need to pull off this part. Go to. And that's where we're going to hook up with the rest of this. And... Fix our... We're gonna go manual after YVR and then direct to Noxov. That's how we're gonna do it. Don't need you anymore. Alright. We're gonna call that close enough for government work. And then we're gonna go and do init plugin. We're gonna be using one. Alright, so 42.3. Then our block will. Did not recognize our block here? But. Flight aborted by user. I think that's exactly what I did. What it did. I did. Uh, um, let's try this again. See if you can't. Appropriately. Set my fuel. Nope, it didn't want to set my fuel. Okay, so let's. I think they 
okay here. I need 464. Hopefully that won't kick me off the run here. Paused. Fuel has been added during the flight. Yes, because you failed to auto set it. Wait, auto set do do zero eight? Uh, no. Flight aborted by user. Okay, folks, we may wind up trapping the whole on air. Firm Ulam Pele. Alright, I'm just gonna this is what I'm gonna do real quick. Go to see. On, on here. I want you to confirm this for me. Right here, it says that my fuel quantity is 3142.62 pounds. Yes, I hate the fact that there is a disconnect. This on air does things in uh, gallons, in US gallons, and Tolis does it in uh, kilograms. And I hate having to make this. this translation but this says here right here in front of you that it's 3142 gallons firm and fly now are fly my co-pilot go to the flight tracking page Again, 3143 gallons. There, now it updated. There it goes. Our truck. Loaded fuel is greater than due fuel. Okay. We're Flight fly. aborted by user. Come on, guys. You guys are sitting here watching this, right? You can see this. I want to double check because I, I want to get this all on film so I can show this to the guys that on. Okay, again, 3142.62 US gallons. Carrying nothing, no balance, no weight. And to the next screen. 143. Oh. YVR. I've never had this problem. Never happened before. I swear it never happens. On is greater than due fuel on air guys come on come on we flight aborted by user all right you know how to make sure that that doesn't happen let's, let's take this down to how did i get 15,000 i get 15 tons oh come on what are you doing on air you guys have been great, but... Ah... Uh, by VR... Thank you. Getting a tri flight with no track- with no passengers or cargoes. 142.59. Start tracking. Loaded fuel is greater than due fuel. All right, guys. Oh, and okay, okay. I have to show you this. 
show you this guy. This is what it did to my fuel. I had reduced my fuel down to like one or 2,000. It has now increased it to 14,800 kilograms. Um, I have no idea what on air is doing. And I, I can't fly like this. Um, on air, what are you doing? Flight tracking aborted, and yet it's not aborted. I can still see it counting. All right, so here's what we're going to do. enough for government work we're gonna see if it'll do it anyway right um, take a flaps one departure Now I get to wait three hours, I think, and find out whether or not this worked. Because uh, it's still counting. It says session duration. It's still counting. But it did say that flight was aborted. So who knows? Who knows what it's going to do? guys really hope for me because <laughs> i have no idea what's about to happen um all right so let's go to the pushback and start menu uh all right so we need to look at our current metar uh, it looks like 309 Flight director is on on both sides. Speed heading altitude, or speed and heading are dashed. Altitude is set to ATC cleared, which since we have no ATC, is just going to be our cruise flight level. Uh, Anti-skid and nose wheel steering is on. Switching panel is all normal. I'm going to set our squawk. Yes, I know I'm, I'm squawking VFR while definitely flying IFR, but I don't have anything to squawk, so I'm Beacon on, and then we are going to this. This we're already half an hour into the stream. I haven't even started the engines yet, because um, then I just get to hope that it worked out. All right, so we're gonna tail right. Replan pushback. And then we're going to start that pushback. I love, I love that this thing rolls up on the grass. <laughs> like, it has no fucks to give. Yeah, um, apparently today we just get to hope that our flight gets acknowledged and land without issue. Um, if it doesn't work, then we are definitely going to be filing some complaints with on air. We've got a number of, of feedbacks. Um, 
that we need to talk about with On Air. Don't get me wrong. I love On Air. That's why I'm willing to put together this idea of the feedback. Um, because I want it to be as good as it can be. I want it to be both accessible and representative and fun. And I think we're losing the fun. Police parking brake, yes, ma'am. All right, we may start engine, switch that to ignition, and ignite engine two. We're going to wait for 20% and one rotation. So, complaints with on air, obviously. until you land and shut down the engines. Obviously, that's an issue, right? Um, all this nonsense with not being able to track my flight. Um, because I had to fix them not getting my fuel correct. My fuel was way, way low. Um, I definitely would have crashed. But because I fixed it, it tells me that it's aborted. And yet, even though it tells me that it was aborted, it doesn't seem to have been aborted. I, I can't be sure. I, I don't know what's going on. And that is itself a problem. Uh, another problem, they've recently changed the way things work. So uh, jobs have now two expiration dates. They have the acceptance expiration date. And then they have a hard termination date. And... Um, so they hard terminate at minus 16 days. So 16 days after their uh, last acceptance date, um, they they terminate forever. They just set parking brake. But 16 days after their last acceptance date, um, they get deleted. But they don't just get deleted, you also pay the penalties. Now, that would be fine, except for the fact that, one, that takes away a lot of the fun, right? Because one of the things that they do is, um, in the minutes that lead up to 23 minutes to termination, the value of the job goes up until it reaches four times the original base price. Uh, which is great, but obviously they're not expecting you to complete the job in that time. But that means that... What was I saying? Um, so obviously they don't expect you to complete the job before the penalty applies. Unless you can fly the, the route in 23 minutes. Um, so they expect you to be in that negative time frame. All right. So let's go ahead and... Did I not turn on my... No, my beacon's on. All right. A engine mode normal. Lead off. Flaps one. Brake armed. It's down two. Down one. Flight controls. Down one. Then APU master off. Taxi checklist. Turn on our taxi light. Park brake off. Anometer run. Auto brake set max. Start the cabin. And then take off, unfit. 
also turn on our terrain. We're going to go to the end of the row here, and then we're going to hang a left. For some reason, this definitely feels heavy. Not sure why it feels heavy. It shouldn't. Also, I apologize if you can hear that. That is, I'm turning into a crotchety old man, but that that's an asshole driving by with his uh, car sub really out. Okay, so we're gonna come around here and then we're gonna hit golf. I think. Um, so they clearly don't intend you to finish jobs before they expire. They want you to pick them up before they expire. Um, and when you're dealing with a larger VA, that becomes an issue because we have a lot of people that want to fly a lot of different places and everything. But as a dispatcher, that means I have to keep jobs available all over the country for good, well, actually all over the world or good money. Not that bad, except for the fact that all of these jobs expire, um, and they can expire while already partially done. So like right now, I'm flying back to Vancouver so I can pick up another uh, load of cargo and bring it back here to Denver, because if I don't complete this within the next, I think, day and a half, that job goes away and I lose $10 million. And I have to pay, I think, like a... It's not significant, but it's like it's like a $5,000 uh, penalty. And... But on top of that, I also have all the fuel that I've, that I've bought anchoring this stuff back and forth. Um, because I've already done, like, 10 or 15 laps between here and... Uh, between uh, Vancouver and... Nellis Air Force Base in in Las Vegas and then I've already done another two laps here in Denver that's a lot of fuel flying an A319 back and forth between areas that are 600 to 900 nautical miles apart um, there's also landing fees and storage fees that are piling up at both at, at all the locations that I've been uh, idling I've been working on this job for probably two weeks, just trying to get it done. And unfortunately, um, I'm now rushed to complete it because if I don't, I lose everything. I, I lose everything that I've already lost. I also lose penalties in addition. And, um, and I don't gain anything. And unfortunately, it's my VA that's paid all the fees because technically this is their rental. It's their aircraft, not mine. We are all lined up. Parking brake on. All right, before takeoff checklist, transporter TARA, runway turnoffs on, landing lights on, nose wheel lights to take off. Um, engine mode is at normal. Brake temp's good. All right, chrono start. Stop this one. Set 50%. Why is my throttle not working? Okay, X-Plane. Uh, 
This is my throttle. X plane. <laughs> Why? This works. Why not this? This works. My nose wheel steering works. So how do you not recognize my throttle? Why is everything broken today? Is something joystick actions? Primary stick dead band. Primary joystick found. Enable second stick. No. Pillar aligned. Enter to current position. Pedal brakes aligned. Use more brake. Explain <laughs> why? Okay, nothing is working today. Um, explain, <laughs> please, please, because like it recognizes that it's moving. It rec you can see it here, right? What is going on? Why is everything broken today? You can see it's moving. Like, it's not that the the thing is, is broken. I can't... I... I... This is recognizing everything. So I don't know why this isn't affecting the. F oh my god, why? Advance it up to 50%. Let's stabilize. No. We're gonna, we're gonna have to handle this real janky today, folks. Because nothing is working. Um, we're just... I, I don't even begin to know what's happening. Airborne time log. Okay, positive rate, gear up. AP1. Why are my flaps at two? Ah, oh, okay. Everything not working. Got it. I, I think I got the memo now. Um, lever to climb, lever to climb, lever to climb. Yeah, okay. This is going to be fun on landing, let me tell you. Why did this not say, hey, airborne time? Okay, yeah, airborne time log. Oh, everything is broken. Hey, okay, flaps clean. We're already at 9,000 feet, so we took off from Denver, which is uh, five, 6,000 feet. Okay, so uh, for those of you who may be joining, 
everything appears to be broken today. My uh, flaps decided to automatically set themselves to two, even after I only set them to one. My throttle is not controlling my throttle, even though X-Plane is recognizing my throttle, controlling my throttle. Um, so the Tolis is just ignoring <laughs> my control inputs. Um, on air is screwing up my fuel. Um, I just cannot catch a break to save my life today. For over 10,000 feet, I'm going to go ahead and turn off these landing lights and release the passengers, even though we don't have any passengers. We are totally empty right now, flying back to Vancouver. I guarantee once we hit Vancouver, um, I am definitely... Uh, once we hit Vancouver, I'm definitely... I may or may not wind up um, doing a second leg doing the doing the leg to return to Denver <clears throat> if I do I will definitely be restarting the sim um, and and testing my uh, throttle to make sure that it works properly uh, also for those of you who may have been around for a while at least uh, I hope there are some of you um, you may know that we had some excitement a while back about some, uh, rudder pedals that I had ordered. Well, unfortunately, those rudder pedals somehow got lost in the mail. As, as I predicted they would, I, we, we can't, they can't find them anywhere. We, we've submitted a missing mail request. Um, no idea if that's going to, to solve anything. Probably not. Um, basically, we're just going to be out rudder pedals at this point. Um, so, we're out like 70 bucks and not going to get the rudder pedals. Uh, day has just been a day of disappointments. And I hope that you guys are having a much better day than I. Um, at least, here's the thing. At least all the things going wrong here in the sim are entertaining. Like, this is content. Uh, so, getting back to On Air. Some of the issues that I have with On Air are... Um, see, the thing is, it's fun. It's fun enough that I'm sticking around and trying to make it better, but there are some issues with it. Like, uh, passenger flights pay nothing. Uh, it's peanuts compared... Like, the, 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 the job I'm doing right now is ten, is $10 million, uh, and I'm just flying cargo. Uh, this is actually a relatively small one. Some of the, some of the bigger jobs uh, right now are $50 million to fly cargo around a couple of, a couple of legs. Uh, meanwhile, most of the uh, passenger flights are like one to four million. I, the, the highest I've seen is four million, and that was on a last minute uh, bonus. So, and, and considering that I only get 60% of that, my VA gets the other 40%, not a lot of money. Uh, not considering how much time and effort goes into something like and then it seems like all of our other jobs are sized for like 747s and A380s. And frankly, um, there is no... I can't think of a sim that has a decent 747 right now. Uh, X-Plane certainly doesn't. Uh, MFS doesn't. I'm not sure about FSX or P3D. I can hope P3D. Um... But X-Plane doesn't and MFS doesn't. They have a default one. I think we all know how defaults go. Okay, they have a PMDG. Cool. Um, I haven't gotten into P3D because it has a really high bar of entry. And it's just an upgraded version of FSX, which 
is 16 year old simulator and it shows it uh p3d also shows it just not as much they did do they have done a lot and they have done a lot of updates to it as p3d um and they expect a lot of money up front and then the aircraft for it are also expensive um now that being said aircraft are expensive in every sim do not get me wrong and similarly my complaints about mfs all it has right now are default aircraft and community project right so take what i say about mfs with a grain of salt um because i'm i can only judge it as it stands as it is right now and um right now it's broken every time they release an update it breaks more than it fixes uh i've i've already heard reports they updated today i've already heard reports that there are people who can't uh that that they black screen as soon as they try to update um the aircraft themselves i've heard that now they're the uh there's a couple of uh, PFDs that will just freeze up on descent. And these are things that they know about, that Sobo knows about. And they're not, they're, there's just nothing they can do about it. Everything, every time they fix something, three things break. Um, and yet I still have to see them pestering me about the Japan uh, DLC that I got for free because I have the $120 package. I think everybody got that for me. Um, <clears throat> but I've already downloaded it, and still, it nags me at every time I launch the game. Um, like, I get it, you're proud of, of the scenery, but it doesn't matter if I can't fly in it. Um, they had, they had the, uh, they're saying they fixed the crash with the scener scenic point camera. Which wasn't supposed to be activating for everyone anyway, like, um... Uh, it was activating when it shouldn't and then crashing the game and then people wonder why i'm playing x-plane i'm flying x-plane because x-plane flies where mfs crashes right um so that's why i'm in x-plane i would love to be playing mfs right now because it is absolutely stunningly beautiful it has so much potential but Asobo, what you've done to my boy! I can't, I, I can't live with what you've done to this simulator. It, it has so much potential. All you need to do is not fuck it up. And, and give all you had to do. This is, this is 100%. All they had to do was give PMDG a dev kit and a year and a half, and they would have launched with a 7.3 and a 7.4 if you added what is it aerosoft likes to do um likes to do airbuses for fsx you'd have given them the same amount of time the same the same dev kit you'd have launched with an a320 that was totally flyable that was study level as it stands there's nothing to do in mfs but dick around right all of the of the aircraft are memeable, and I'm not I'm not saying that that's worse than other simulators, right? Because other simulators also have total garbage for default aircraft, but other simulators have payware aircraft that are already ready to go, and MFS doesn't. Um. X-Plane 11 had the benefit of having X-Plane 10. And it was backwards compatible. You could you could forward most aircraft from 10 to 11. It didn't require a whole rebuild of the entire piece of software. Um, obviously, from FSX to MFS, it did require a total rebuild. And that's fair. It's 16-year jump, you know? It makes sense that it would require a total rebuild. I'm not dinging it for that. I'm dinging it because they didn't wait for it. They didn't wait for it to be done. They 
They just decided, you know what, this is it, this is all we're doing. And now, now they've just got a roadmap of a year and a half of fixes. And it's like, you could have just waited, right? You could have just waited until... Uh, you could have just waited until you had some payware aircraft, until you had something study level to offer. It looks gorgeous. But it's a very, very pretty paperweight. Um, one day, it will revolutionize flight sim. Today is not that day. Um, unfortunately, right now, I do feel very robbed. Um, I don't think it is fair to sell... Because... We got upsold, right? We got upsold on the backs of aircraft. And on the backs of scenery. And the default game, I think, is 60, and then it was 90, and then 120 for the, for the three different versions, right? So, I did try to fly the 787 Dreamliner, which was in the Ultimate tier, which is what I got, the $120 tier. And it is just a meme. It is absolute garbage. It, 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 the plane literally tried to float, fly me into the ground. Um, and I never want to see on my stream, I never want to see proof of powered descent into terrain. I hate that phrase to begin with, and I definitely do not want to see that ever happen to me. And the 787 almost made me do it. Um, and then the damn thing couldn't stop. I I have no idea what was wrong with this thing. Um, but it was not fun. It was it was a meme. It was not a good plane. So. That plane was what sold me on getting anything above the starter. Uh, because I figured, okay, if they're putting these on these tiers and expecting so much money, like, they can't be asking for an additional $60 off the back of 10 airport sceneries. Not in a default simulator that's already the, like, just the the default airports that aren't handcrafted are more realistic and more accurate than a lot of payware scenery in X Plane Eleven. It's better than Ortho. Um, so, with the defaults being that good. I couldn't justify $60 for slight upgrades, and a lot of times, not even that. Um, there's some stuff that I've seen at premium airports, and I, I can't call it out right now because I can't remember them, but I know that I've seen them, and it absolutely disgusted me because it's stuff that I would not have expected to see in a freeware airport in XP, XP-11. Um... And I don't mean, like, some of the really good ones like Beirut. I mean, there are freeware airports that are basically, they just redrew the line. Um, or removed default aircraft. Or placed default aircraft to make the, the, make the thing look a little more traveled. Ah. Uh, but... I don't think but there are things in some of the payware airports some of the in some of the um, handcrafted airports by Asobo that I would not have expected that much trash 
in a X-Plane 11 freeware unknown community member just uploaded some ortho tiles. I would not have expected that it to be that bad. Um, yes, that's usually not the entire thing, but like a little detail that should not have been overlooked. But it doesn't change the fact that when you when you're selling me a sixty dollar upgrade off of default aircraft that are just like every other default aircraft, and ten sceneries that don't have the level of attention to detail that I would expect out of quote handcrafted airports. Then what am I paying for? We shut up now? Yes, I know the AP is off. I turned it off. It's funny how if I manually fly it over 30,000, it has no problem descending me back down to 30,000. But I was sitting there at 28,000 or uh, 29,800 for forever. I even turned on vert vertical speed mode and told it to ascend, and it just did not care. It was not moving. But the second I disconnect the autopilot, bring it up over 30,000, and then re-engage, it drops back down. I don't know why. Anyway, point is. Um, so, since all I got was 10 sceneries that really still needed some attention, and... 10 aircraft that were garbage. I'm going to say it. They're garbage. They're garbage aircraft. Um, I'm going to say I feel like uh, MFS uh, Premium Deluxe was highway robbery. Um, I'm really not pleased with my purchase. I would have much rather paid the 60, still gotten the simulator, get everything in um, in just ortho mode, just ortho photogrammetry, and just say, you know what, that's good enough. Um, at this point, I almost feel like that money would have been better spent buying P3D. And hey, it might not be a, po a popular opinion, but it's how I feel. So, um, on air. <sighs> on air is is a wonderful thing. I love it. And guys, if you wind up seeing this, I do love you. I love the product that you're making. I love the idea of it, and I love a lot of the things you've done with it. There are some directions that you've gone that I feel are less than ideal we'll say um deleting my my jobs that are 70 80 90 percent done nah that's that's robbery especially if you're making me also pay penalties or having a job 90% done, and then you change a rule. Like, if... I get it, if, if this had already been the rule, and then... Um, if this had already been the rule, and I accepted these jobs knowing that was the rule, and then I can't make them, that's on me. But... Hey, Sam Angel, thank you so much for showing up, wifey, and for dropping that subscription with Twitch Prime. Guess what, guys? If you have Twitch Prime, you can get, drop a free subscription to any streamer you want. I might have a slightly biased suggestion who you might spend it on. Because let's be honest, all I'm worth is a free subscription. Uh, I do try to give you guys something worth uh, paying for, but uh, you can't argue with free 99. 
uh, unless you can get it for free fitty. And uh, around here, we prefer free fitty. Uh, but we try to be worth free 99. So, uh, basically, we got bait and switched, right? We, we accepted jobs under one rule, rule set. Then they changed the rules, expired the jobs, and made us pay all the penalties. Um, I don't like that. I'm also looking at the same aircraft. Like, um, so they've decided in ex for expediency's sake, and because of where they were at before MFS's release and before um, Flight Sim got to a very big thing of MFS and its accessibility um, they were set up so that you could launch on air launch your sim load an aircraft and scan it into the system and it would grab a bunch of details about the plane so that if you have a plane that they don't have in their system you could just fire it up scan it and it would pull all the data directly out of the aircraft files and you're done right but now, especially now that they've changed it so that there's like a three-day approval process, everything has to be manually moderated now um, for adding new aircraft because people were abusing it. Um, so now they no longer do that. It, it will scan the thing, but then it has to be manually approved. So my question is... Why then are you still using all, all all and only the data that comes with it from the simulator when in reality the aircraft is very very different like I've seen A380s that have like 180 seats There's there are no A380s with 180 seats they have like 500 seats they're they're a very big aircraft or th 300 something I forget what the numbers were, but I have seen some absolutely ridiculous uh, statistics. Um, there was something that said that it had like 285 seats on an A320. And an A320 has between like 160 and 180 seats. You might be able to squeeze up to 200, but it it's sitting there saying it's got 280. That's There's no way. Um, that's got to be abused. So, why is it that the only real difference should be that these planes exist in different um, simulators? You know, they exist in X-Plane 11, P3D, MFS, FSX. So, why if that's the only difference, why do we keep seeing all these different, uh, all these different planes? Like, if I look up an A380, I'll see, like, eight different entries, sure, because there's different developers and there's different games, different simulators that they're in. But all their statistics are wildly different because it's pulling them from the simulator. It's not pulling them from any real sources. So whatever a, uh, a simulator developer, whatever, whatever the airplane developer says that it can do... It can do an on-air regardless of whether the real plane can do it in real life or not. Um, and by and large, a lot of these tend to be under-reported. Um, and I'm not sure how their logic even works, because uh, I have tried in my TOLUS here to enter the... It, it says that it can hold 40,000... Uh, some 40... 40-some-odd 40 thousand... Uh, pounds of cargo i convert that into ton, in, into metric tons and i try to load it but i can't hold nearly that much cargo um even even trying to supplement it with passengers sometimes i come up short but the but on air swears that i can fit that much Despite the fact that it exceeds the minimum, uh, the maximum takeoff weight, I'm so confused by stuff like that. Why? Why is that allowed? Why does it work that way? 
If it's impossible to fit into the into the plane, why is it allowed to be picked up? Why, or more correctly, why does your plane database tell you that it can do things that my simulator can't if those numbers are set by the simulator? Like you said that this, this does a scan from the simulator, but I can't do in my simulator what your scanned version says I can do. So what is it? Do you, did you just enter it? Did you just manually edit it? Can you not manually edit it? Because they just released today saying they can't. <clears throat> now I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that Tolis doesn't have some issues. For instance, in order to get to the actual zero fuel weight, the minimum zero fuel weight, the zero fuel, uh, the zero fuel weight for if you have no passengers, no cargo, it's below... <laughs> The airframe weight. Uh, the airframe weight on this plane is, I think, 42.8 tons. And uh, it's missing about two tons. So the, the Tolis ISCS screen is missing about two tons. That's why I had to add 15 passengers to get that extra two tons. Otherwise... Yeah, it's about two tons that it's missing. I'm not sure why. <clears throat> Pardon me. I really need to be a little more quiet, otherwise I'm not going to be able to make it to tomorrow. Um, unfortunately, I managed to strain my voice even more today. Which I really shouldn't have done, because I've been sick and I've been getting over it, but um, I felt like it was good enough for me to stream today. Then everything went wrong. Now, sure, um, but I should have chilled out a little. Also, um, there are channel points things down there that you can do at any time. Make me stretch, grab water. There's also a community goal to make me fly with no HOTUS. Which, getting a little taste of that today, because my throttle is not functional. Y'all can hear me rocking this back and forth, and it is doing nothing. Like, you should see this rocking back and forth from minimum to maximum over and over and over again. It is absolutely not doing that thing because... Um, and it's weird because the simulator is seeing this movement, but the 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 Tolis is not doing it. I feel like something is wrong with the Tolis right now. And I hope that this flight even gets logged. I I'm not even sure what on air is going to do now because it told me that it it it, it was disregarding me. Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know what it's going to do. Um, it told me that it aborted the flight, but then it didn't abort the flight. Probably because tracking hadn't started yet. Or rather, my engines hadn't started yet. So I don't know. Um, we'll see. If I wind up having wasted this time, I'm going to be real, real mad. By the way, um, just a quick question. Who has how many uh, channel points? I'd like to have some idea how much... Um, like how, how many channel points is it fair for me to ask for? for so, like, I don't know how quickly you're getting channel points, so I don't know... If I'm overcharging for hydrate, I, like I know some other bigger streamers are doing like a thousand points for hydrate or stretch or five thousand points, but you have five thousand. You have five thousand. Okay, so you can definitely afford everything going on. Okay. Yeah, the the channel points down here at the bottom of the bottom of the screen under your message bar. Is that a different answer? 
don't know. You can stretch. Okay, I'm gonna get up and stretch right now. Let me move my mic a little bit. When I stand up to the side. As I don't know if you guys heard that. I kind of hope you didn't. That was a real loud pop. <clears throat> All right. Bring this back in position. Sorry if you guys just. That bump up against my cheaper back. I do have a, a high back. Okay, so that was stretch. I'm gonna go ahead and mark to be done. Might be to know when the husband hubby needs to strike. True, very, very true. Um, another thing that I want to start is a donation goal for Navigraph. I'm running into so many problems as my nav data is out of date. Let's see if we can do that right now. See how much is it?
this. Right there. There we go. Okay, so that's our that's our donation goal. That'll get me one year. But yeah, it does. Alright, I have to look at it much, much smaller than you guys do. I suppose. Go back to the more. And that can start in. Uh, I wish this was as good looking as. But it just isn't. isn't it not gonna be and that's okay at least it runs right at least it runs currently more than i can say for mfs really really wish Button button button, button 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 back or text Much better. You guys think, think that looks better? Mid-message pause always makes me giggle. Yeah, me too. Especially in this case, because you did, in fact, hit two buttons. Given the fact that you did hit two buttons, it makes sense that you get two sets of buttons. Oh, no. This, it looks like Endearing Chaos got one of her emotes approved. If you guys haven't seen Endearing Chaos, check her out.
Um, she streams on, I think, Fridays and Sundays. She does a King um, stream on Friday and an early morning stream on Sunday. Uh, she mostly plays Seven Days to Die with uh, Mischief Maker, which is stupid fun. Um, I like to walk the line. I will give her a bunch of Feral Whites, or I will give her uh, Berserk, and she can never tell what I'm going to do. I also like to give her a lot of building support, because uh, it cuts down on the amount of time she has to spend uh, mining and on stream. Um, kind of the same reason why I give her Berserk a lot, is so that she can get from her place, like if she dies. I'll give her Berserk to help her hoof it back to the place where she died. And I think it's fun. Um, you just spend a couple of bits here and there. She's got the prices set real low. Like, it takes 10 cents to do a lot of stuff. Uh, I think it costs me 20 cents to give her a bunch of building supplies, which is like hundred cement or a bunch of frame like it, it's it's dumb cheap you have a lot of fun with it. Uh, <clears throat> or to teleporter I love doing the double that's just that's just fun for me I don't know why it's as fun as this, but <clears throat> um, also in case you don't know we have had some new drop in here in the last few minutes. Uh, if you poke the channel points button down below, we have a community goal right now to uh, make me fly a flight. An entire stream, no HOTUS. You have to use keyboard and mouse, that's all I've got. Um, we've also got a few custom things for you. Uh, you can unlock my. Um, my pom-poms for a day, like, you can't on most channels. Or, another thing you can do is, um, go ahead and poke hydrate or, uh, uh stretch goals. Those will, uh, make me water or legs. And then, uh, the other big one that I have is, uh, for the end of the stream, if, um... I will do that in just one second. I'm going to finish explaining this. Then I will grab that, that drink of water. Um, so if you... Guiding the uh, guiding the raid... I will keep those in a buffer. So even if you don't... Even if you're not here... Uh, my next stream... Like if, if we get too many people suggesting too many guide the raids... After stream I will raid that channel if it is live... And I will do it in the order in which they are received. So if the next, if, if you want to guide the raid to a specific channel, let me know by hitting that channel points button down below. And I will take us to the channel of your choice if it's online uh, after the stream. If it's not, I will hold it until the next time until I am able to successfully raid them. So I will keep trying every day until they're available. Um, so if you guys want me to share the love with somebody that you watch, or even with yourself, I would be happy to do that. Just go down into that channel points button and hit the, the guide the stream, or guide the raid, and I will absolutely do that the next time that it is online as I'm in. However, for the moment, I have to redeem that uh, hydrate. So I will be right back. Go ahead and mute myself and leave you guys sitting here watching. I will be right back in a few minutes. Go and grab some more.
All right, and I am back. I've got that water. You can hear that. That is the squeak of hydration occurring. All right. Well, let's take a look at where we are. Uh, where are we at? <laughs> Hydrations. Yes. All right. So it looks like we are. This doesn't have uh, graphical lines or uh, political lines. But obviously, like, uh, we left from Denver here. We're probably a third of the way, quarter of the way to Vancouver. We're just going over the last of the ro uh, it's the Rockies. This isn't the Rockies either. This is all of this. Yeah, all that's the rock. Looks like there's enough separation here that they might not consider part of the Rockies. Yeah, I do know this is the Cascade. Yeah, Cascade Rain. It, it, it's different. Not sure what that... Anyway. Go ahead and look back up here. Take a look at our controls. Make sure everything swimmingly. And uh, no, it is not. It is all going flyingly. Because that is what we're doing today. Not swimming. We're... I could do Subnautica, I suppose. Then we could go swimming. Um, however, even if uh, I could say things aren't going flyingly, but we are in fact flying. However, my my throttle does nothing. The throttle is totally useless. I don't know why. Yeah, swimming woo is not in the plane. Not in the plane. <clears throat> that would be interesting, though. To have, like, a wading pool airplane. I mean, obviously, you'd have to... You'd have to buy, like, a super... Like, a jumbo jet. Something. You have to have, like, a jumbo jet. You have to strip it down. Um, and then fill it partially with water. <clears throat> Who knows? You might be able to get a whole swimming pool. That was, uh, listen, he didn't, he didn't belly land on water and keep going so much as, or, we didn't land on the water, we landed on a runway, but the runway is super short and we were going the wrong direction. What I didn't know at the time is that that runway is a 14 degree downward grade. The way I was trying to land, which means there was no chance I was ever stuck. Um, the correct way to land on Narsar Swat is you fly out over the bay, turn around and come back in, and land on it running uphill. And then you really hope that you make it up before you go full stop, because otherwise you're never you're never gonna move in without rolling back. Um, our Star Swag is a real pain in the ass. And I should have read its approach better. Um, I also should have read the restrictions because it cannot be flown at night. And we were absolutely landing at night. And that's probably why you're not allowed to fly it at night. Um, because you clearly see that, hey, 
uh, this runway. It's, uh, it's going down. So I kind of probably maybe fly the other way so that I can stop. Um, and then because we were safely in the water with our engine still going, I decided to see, hey, will X-Plane let me be a seaplane? And it absolutely did. We, uh, Started our way across the uh, across the Atlantic, not in the air. <laughs> Turned ourselves into a very unsubmersible submarine. Um, I'm not sure how it was. It managed to do that because the engines were partially submerged, and I'm pretty sure if the engines of a jumbo jet are sufficiently submerged. Uh, you don't see any, like, the engine will not run. They'll put out the flames and you're done. Uh, <laughs> that was the best landing ever. I'm sad nobody clipped it. Um, and it's definitely expired. I can't download it. Uh, <laughs> but it was definitely a fun learning experience. It was not an easy flight. Um, and it turns out that a month later, Flight Deck to Sim did it. I didn't know that until, uh, many, many moons later. Because I was, uh, so I was trying to learn how to do something that he did. He made a map of all the places that he has flown on stream. I was trying to do the same thing, so I kind of wanted to see how he did it, what he did, and then I happened to see he landed at Narsarswak. It's like, hold on. You landed at Narsarswak. Um, so I had to go back and watch the VOD and got into how it's, it's daytime only, and... It's got a 14 degree grade, and uh, if you try to land on it backwards, you're definitely gonna die. Um, so those those are the rules. If you land on it backwards, you die. Uh, luckily, that means they don't really have a penalty for it. So all we lost was our lives. Uh, <laughs> and I st and. Okay, I'm still going to disagree. I don't think it was the best landing ever. I disagree. I think the best landing ever was our third go-around at, P at, at, uh, at Lester B. Pearson International. We There was some storms in the area. We went around like three times. It was a night landing. It was one of my first night landings. And uh, we ran out of fuel. And we... Um, we did not have time to deploy the ram air turbine. We were at like 2,000 feet. We dropped 1,200 feet and landed in a copse of trees. Um, I think that was still... Because because my plane just went dark. All my avionics went out. My I, I didn't even know where to get at my standby compass or anything. I had 2,000 feet. I was already at 140 knots. My uh, my flaps were fully down. My landing gear was fully down. I had no uh, no power to, to retract them. Um, I was just done. For. There was nothing I was doing to fly that plane more than a few feet before I just smacked the ground. I think we landed at like 1,200 feet per minute. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, what what was the date of that? I can actually find out what the date. Where are you? Eight. There it is. That was November 12th. 2019. It's been almost a year since that happened. Um, almost. Not quite. But almost. Is 
that's that's my one caveat. I think the crash at Lester B. Pearson would might have to go watch that one. I wish you could. I, I don't know if there's a clip or highlight of it, but the the VOD is gone. Um, which only keeps like three months of VOD. Um Don't want to hear myself. Shut up, Pashon. Who cares what you have to say? By the way, that's my real name. My real name is Sean. Um. Oh, it's. I'm on better Twitch TV. And. Videos. Um, Cross code thing clips. so much um those bits absolutely add up they do help um and i wish that i was better at letting y'all know how and and why and everything Anything that's that old, no, definitely. Um, all video. Uh, no, first person. It's not there. I'm sorry, guys. I looked. I tried. I was trying to find it for you. Um, yeah, that little... It looks like an A with... I don't know. There's like a little diamondy thing with a smaller diamond in it. Uh, that's the bits button. And sometimes, if you're lucky and Twitch likes you, which it doesn't like me. It hasn't liked me in like two... You can um, watch ads for bits. And those are the best bits, because they're free bits. And I like free bits. We like free things. Like I said, free 50, free, free 99. I try, to, I try to ask for a free 50 pi price while giving you free 99 content. That's, that's my goal here. Yeah, it hasn't let me watch one in like two years. No, the pom pom is channel point. So with that, you can make me get water, you can make me stretch. You can make me fly an entire stream with no HOTUS, which is kind of what I'm having to do today because, um, so here's, here's my, uh, control levers. Uh, that's my throttle. And this is the sound of me jerking my throttle up and down to full extension. 
that thing should be wiggling back and forth from max throttle to toga from from toga to stop back and forth it's doing nothing it's got fucking nothing rookie numbers um so unfortunately that's not working today now the thing is the throttle's not broken like i steered the entire way out here with my throttles rocker um i used the throttles buttons to retract my landing gear and my flaps unfortunately though um so i looked like like you can see here my throttle is working But it's, it's not translating into actually affecting the aircraft. I don't know why. Um, I'm just, I'm just at a loss. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> um... I just, I, I don't know. Did it get on a map? No, you were just looking at the map. Like, that's how it was mapped. It was where I was showing you that it was still functioning. Yeah, there's nothing in here about the throttle. Uh, might need to restart X-Plane. Yeah, that's what I was planning on doing, but I can't do that mid-flight. I mean, I could, but then I'd have to start it up all over again. Uh, probably have to restart the flight entirely because of on-air, which on-air was being a pain in the ass today. Also, just so people are aware, um, that Navigraph thing at the bottom, I'm asking for $90 total. That'll get me a year of Navigraph. Um, I'm not trying to say, like, oh, I need this every month or something. And it's also not a perpetual thing. Like, I'll have to do something like that every year to make sure that I have the money for Navigraph. Um, but again, the idea here is that I can fly on my own without having to worry about stuff being in any way realistic, but in order to bring that realism to the stream, I would rather have the stream pay for it. Actually, if that's having an issue, I wonder if on air is giving the throttle issues. No, uh, it doesn't have any integration with the controls at all. It just pulls, um, it just pulls telemetry from the sim. And if it was going to fuck with anything, it would fuck with the whole POTUS. Like, there's no reason why all the buttons and such should work, but the actual throttle itself not. Though I do wonder... What some of these things... Oh, wait, no. Aileron... There's nothing here about... Yes, thank you for taking a screenshot. I didn't want a screenshot. I do appreciate it, though. Uh, maybe I just live by the rule that computers are weird and gremlins are real. I mean, fair. What are you yelling at me for? Oh, 
Because I know that I have to do By the way, that's what we call this, Tours Day. I haven't, I haven't actually used that phrase in a while, but these are our Tours Day flights. Um, it was better when it was Fly Day, but uh, Twitch Strike told me that was a bad day for streaming X-Plane. I've seen weird crap happen, so it would not surprise me if uh, a driver issue reading data out of the sim would break the throttle. Well, maybe I, maybe I don't know what you what you mean by reading data out. Of um. No, it doesn't make sense. I mean, fair. It doesn't make sense. Um, but I, I had all kinds of problems with on-air when I was first booting up, too. Um, but we also have a lot of just... We have a lot of technical issues with on-air as well. On-air does a lot of things that just make me go a little batty. Um... Most recently, they made a change so that um, now jobs have two expiration dates. They have the expiration date where you can no longer accept them. And if you accept them within 23 minutes of that time, then you get uh, four times as much money for doing it last minute. And then 16 days after that expiration date, um, they delete it entirely and make you pay the penalty. Um, and you have to pay the penalty anyway whenever you do the job, but the penalty is usually like uh, one to one to ten percent of the. I can't remember if it's one or ten, but it's it's either one or ten percent of the base price. Um, so if you accept it, it, like if you accept a one million dollar uh, base price job at twenty three minutes, it's worth four million dollars, right? If you then don't complete it within 16 days, then um, you either pay, I think you pay 100,000, so I think it's 10%. Or no, I think, it's, I think it would then be 1,000. I'm not sure, but um, it's either 1% or 10% that you pay. Uh, so you pay that penalty, and you're going to pay that penalty either way, whether you do it or whether you don't do it. It's just that it's such a low amount that doing the job and paying the penalty is more valuable you get paid more that way than if you um than if you accepted the job when it was still good and completed it before its expiration date um now i wouldn't mind this change too tremendously i mean whoopity do big deal it you know if, if it goes two and a half weeks Without getting done, then you pay the penalty and you know that when you pick up the job. Okay, fine. But they did this without telling us. So we had, I think, probably 200 jobs. And like 150 of them expired on the same day and just yoinked a bunch of cash out of our account. If we would have known that that was the way it was going to be, we wouldn't have accepted all these jobs. Um, we would have been more careful about what we were joining, what we were using, um, because we, we would, because right now, the way we, when we accepted these jobs, what we knew was that we would only pay the penalty when the job was completed, and when the job was completed, we would also get a million, uh, a million dollars. Okay, so if I'm getting a million dollars and I'm paying a $2,000 uh, $2, fine, Okay, I'm still making like $998,000. We're good. But when instead we're paying all that money but we're not getting anything, it was an unexpected expense that we may not have had the money for. Um, so I really wish that they would have discussed that with us. I especially think that they should not have expired anything that was more than halfway done 
Personally, I think if it was if it was in any way started, then it should not expire ever. That's my personal my personal opinion. If it's already partially done, it shouldn't expire. Um, although that can lead to abuse, because a person can just fly to, to where each job starts, move one small shipment, and all of a sudden, okay, well now we can't expire it anymore. Sure, but the flip side is that I that right now I am within like a day and a half of losing out on this job. Now, on this job, I'm making $10 million, and I have flown, I think, like, 14 or 16 routes already, just ferrying this, this cargo from place to place. Like, I'm going to, to Vancouver, picking it up, taking it to Nellis, going back to Vancouver, going back to Nellis, back to Vancouver, back to Nellis. Like, I have flown back and forth probably a dozen times at least. And I'm doing more now. Um, but if I don't finish it within the next, I think, day and a half, it's going to expire and I get nothing out of it, even though I've gotten all but like 40,000 pounds of cargo delivered. I get nothing. And I pay all the, the, the penalties. And I still have to pay for all the fuel that I've burned. All the landing fee, all the storage fee. I still have to pay all of this money out of pocket, but I get nothing for having done it. I just don't feel good about that. I feel like that's that's anti-fun. Right? This is supposed to be still a game. It's not... This is not an economic simulator. Otherwise, you would have us paying things like slot fees whenever we're flying jets whenever we're flying something that's commercial jet right we would have to pay for slot fee we would have to pay um insurance uh we'd probably have to do more than a check ride we'd, we'd have to actually like you know fly for more than 20 minutes we couldn't just jump into a plane we've never seen before and just Oh here, here's a, here's a check right. I'm gonna have the the game's AI fly the plane, and just tell it to do what the the you know in game thing tells me, to. and then turn around, land, and we're done. And all of a sudden, I can fly this plane that I know nothing about. But it's not it's not a simulator in that regard. It's it's just. It's fun. It's a game. It's a game that you add on to the simulator to make the simulator more fun and give you a way to kind of track your progress, track your stats. Um, you gain reputation from doing successful, like, uh, reputable flights where you're not breaking rules or um, overspeeding, things like that. So, I don't know. Um... I think, personally, that they need to stick with that having fun mentality. I want to be having fun. That's the point of, of playing. Um, they've also changed it so that um, there's a lot more expense involved in owning an aircraft now. So now it's actually better for me to rent this plane than it is for me to buy it. Where before it was better for me to buy it, it just meant every hundred hours I'd be down for three days. Right? Every hundred hours I'd be down for three days, but who cares? Because otherwise I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not paying for any rental fees. Uh, which are a large degree. Like, I think on this one, it's something like like forty or $50,000 an hour. So today, this is like a, two and a half, uh, three and a half hour flight. That's a lot of money. It's not money I'm having to pay. Because this is technically, it's owned by my, uh, my virtual airline. 
but you know, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars an hour, and my minimum flights are like two to three hours. That's a lot of money that's come out. I mean, think about it. Like I said, I've I've run back and forth between uh, Las Vegas and uh, Vancouver ten times. That's like a two and a half hour flight minimum, sometimes three hours. So, you know, let's go with two and a half hours. That's 25 hours. At 50,000, even if it's just at $50,000 an hour, you know, that's that's 100,000, what, uh, $125,000, uh, an eighth of a million dollars? Just on the... the the rental fee. It's not counting the fuel. Um, but that's, you know, that's how it works. That's they, they they've made it so that it is more cost effective to rent a plane than it is to buy it, and unfortunately, that takes away a lot of my drive because. What I really wanted was to own in-game the planes that I own in the simulator, right? So I wanted to own an A319, I want to own an A320, I want to own another A320 for uh, Microsoft Flight, I want to own a uh, 737, I want to own a 747, and I want to own a 787. Uh, but I don't want to do that anymore because they're not cost-effective to own. Even if you're not flying them. Even if you have an FBO to store them at, you still don't want to do that because they've introduced a lot of price gouging things that makes it no longer viable. So, like, here's the thing. I'm complaining a lot about On Air, but I want to be clear... The reason why I'm complaining about On Air is because I think it can be, and I want it to be, good. I think that it is good, I just want it to be better. Right now, it's missing a lot of that fun that I joined it for. They've just continually made things harder, mostly in, in the uh, name of trying to stop cheating. So, like, there was a couple of days ago, uh, there was about a week ago, I think, um, where I was trying to fly, or maybe it was just this weekend, I'm not sure. Um, but there was, a, there was a couple of days ago when I was trying to fly, and um, they had screwed up something in a patch so that I couldn't, because essentially it was getting confused about time offset, and it was trying to set the time... I think what it was trying to do was auto-set to the uh, actual UTC time while the uh, simulator will only accept my time zone offset. So I fly with like a four-hour offset because I usually fly at night and I don't want to have to constantly be flying night landings. Believe it or not, even though X-Plane is not as pretty as MFS, I still want to do... Uh, daytime flights so that I can see what's going on around me. I can see the clouds that actually look a lot better on Vulcan. Because uh, we, we are running 11.5 um, with Vulcan. And we are definitely seeing an FPS boost. I, I, I think I was at like 45, 50 FPS. Now I'm, I'm at 60 to 70 range. So at the... <laughs> At that, at that rate, I might be able to install, uh, what's it called, uh, Enviro, um, not Active Sky, the other one, X Enviro. I could install that and be back to what I was beforehand, or I could just do Active Sky and lose, like, 3 or 4 FPS, uh, instead of the, like, 20 that I would lose with X Enviro. Who are we almost to, uh... Vancouver? Are we like 360 miles away? Yeah, we're actually getting close. Mito's not too far away. This is actually longer than the Nellis run. This is like 200 nautical miles longer. 
Also, by the way, if you guys play Among Us, please put your data in the Discord. Um, I have a group of people that I play with, well, I've played with once. But we have a Discord that's specifically for people who want to play Among Us without randoms. So if you poke me in my Discord, uh, I will get you invite into that Discord. Um, at least as long as I can vouch for you. If I can, if if you're basically just a rando, then um, well, let me get to know you first. Uh, because this is not my Discord with my friends playing Among Us. It's one of my friends' Discords that I'm a part of. So. If I can't vouch for you, I can't bring you, right? But um, I can I can definitely ask them about you if I can't vouch for you. Uh, so poke me in Discord if you guys play Among Us and might want to be interested in a group that plays the randoms and we play over Discord. So uh, we do do Discord muting and all that stuff. Um, if you guys are interested. If you're not, then fuck off. <laughs> if, also, if there's anything that you guys do play that you want a channel to help help you regulate yourselves, then um, poke me in the suggestions channel. Let me know anything that you'd like. If you if you guys need if you guys just want a voice channel so that you can do Discord uh, do a Discord D and D game with your friends that has absolutely nothing to do with me, my stream, or anything else on my Discord, just poke me and let me know. I'm happy to do that for you. Um, I'm happy to throw up things for you to just use for yourself. The whole point of my Discord... So, okay, some of you may be wondering, why is the name of the Discord DFTTF? The reason for the name goes back a long time. So, Sherman set the Wayback Machine... Or what? Uh, eight years ago? Nine years ago? I don't know. It's been a long time. Maybe maybe ten years ago. I feel old now. But the point is, Sherman set the Wayback Machine for the Waybacks. The Way Waybacks. And um, this was an ancient time when life was petty and cruel. And today laughs at that because it said, hold my beer. Uh, but back then... We had a lot of friends that were falling on unfortunate time. Unlike we are now. And, um, well, we have a friend who uh, still supports us to this day. We still live together. And um, they had an open door policy for friends as long as you didn't do anything to dick people over you were welcome to come over stay you know whatever you needed whenever you needed it. as long as it didn't become you know just i'm living with you now uh then you have to pay rent but otherwise like as long as you need help we're gonna help you and it was called the home for the totally fucked and it just became a meme and then started playing Minecraft. I made a Minecraft server. And that one got named MFTTF. Minecraft for the totally fuck. So as you may have guessed by now, DFTTF stands for Discord or the totally fuck. It has nothing to do with the stream. The stream is connected to it, but it is not connected to the stream, if that makes sense, right? Like, yes, I run my stream out of my Discord that I made, but I made this Discord as a collection, as a home for people who don't want to have to worry about... They don't want to have to fuss with that, right? If you have something that you need a Discord for, I am happy to manage it for you. I am happy to give you channels that only you can see, that you can handle things in. I mean, obviously, me and my moderators can as well. Um... Me and my moderators will have access to every channel on the server. But, uh, the point is, there's anything that you need to support anything you're doing. If you want some place to share friend codes, 
for various games. If you want a Genshin Impact uh, room, if you want voice chats, if you want um, anything but the Sir Emmerich bot, I'm not going to be installing that because it's spyware. It will spy on everybody and everything in my server. I am not allowing that into my um well, anyway the point is just ask put it in the suggestion channel i'm happy to do anything that i possibly can in order to support you guys um that's the point it's for all of us to support each other it's it's not my discord it's our discord and we just want to make it helpful for everyone we want to make it useful for everyone so if there's anything you need, let me know. I want to help you. Okay? So anyway, back to flying. And on air. On air is addictive. Like, especially when I first started, it was it was more fun, and that made it a lot more addictive than it is. Um, I've kind of lost a little bit of the spark for it because it's gotten a lot more complicated and it's not giving me a lot more benefit. Um, what I will say is I have flown so much more in the last couple of weeks. He can attest, um, oh, she's postmodernist can attest. I have been doing a lot of flying. Like any time that they are poking me, it's usually, Hey, how are the flights going? Cause they can see on my discord. I'm in X plane. Um, I am flying so much more. I, Look at that spreadsheet again. Or not. Look at the data. Look at the events. Okay. And 11. Wait. In the last month, I have done Thirty-eight landings. Thirty-eight landings in the last month alone. I have never flown that many in a month before. Um, generally speaking, I get like seven landings a month. Seven to seven to twelve. So I have been flying so much more because this is so fun. It gives me more reason to be flying. It takes away some of my ability to explore um, because I'm flying primarily in the United States because in order to move to another area, I have to actually fly that route. <laughs> Whether I've got cargo or not, I have to actually fly that route and go to another continent. Uh, so I have to make an intercontinental flight in order to change continents. I can't just... Oh, well, today we're flying in Europe. Well, today we're flying in Asia. Today we're flying in Australia. I can't do any of that. I have to actually move myself and the plane. Um, now, I could stop the rent on the plane, move myself, and then pick back up. And, uh, you know, once once I've been moved by public transport, which takes as long as it would take in real life, then I could rent a new plane in the new location and start flying again. But it would still require probably multiple days of me being down and not playing in order to move that or fly it myself. Uh, which I can do. It's just a lot of money to move one person. Think about it. Like I said, it's like $50,000 an hour to rent this plane. So uh, if we're talking about an 8-hour flight across, the, you know, an 8 to 12-hour flight, you're talking about forty thousand dollars or uh, four hundred thousand dollars just to move me, just to move me in my plane. 
<coughs> That's really, really rough. <coughs> Pardon me. What phone? I put you on mute for a reason. Shut up. <laughs> My phone just does not want to cooperate. It, it does the buzz buzz things, and it's buzz buzzing about things that I've told it not to buzz buzz about. Yeah, I think I think we're getting close. I think that this is like the tip of where um, TYVR, uh, where my um, my missed approach is. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Not yet. Ah, uh, it took me so long to get this thing off the ground. I swear, it took me like half an hour. No joke. And I hate that. I hate that it took me so long to get it off the ground. But everything was having problems, right? X-Plane was having problems. On-Air is having problems. I, I, I had to reload On-Air like three times to get it to set my... And, and it never did set my thing. I, I may finish this flight and find out that it's just going to kick out the data because I had to adjust my, my uh, fuel. Because it set my fuel to like... 12,000 kilograms or 12 uh, to like 12 tons when I was supposed to have like nine. Actually, the first time I think it set it to 18 tons and then I I cleared it out, set my set it manually down to like 2,000 and then I uh, ran it again, told it to, to, to put it to resynchronize and auto inject the fuel amount. And it gave me, like, 12,000 kilograms. I'm like, dude, I'm supposed to have, like, 9.6 tons. Why are you doing this 12-ton bullshit? So I just moved it, and it said it disconnected the flight, but it didn't seem to. So who knows? I'm, I'm going to land and see what happens. It may count it. It may not. Oh, no. Oh, no, wifey. Oh no, I'm scared. You guys hear that? I'm scared. Oh, I hope I hope you don't. I I I hope you don't make that goal. I mean, I'm kind of have to do a little bit of it today. Um, I'm gonna have to kind of do a little bit of it today because my. My throttles are. So I have to handle my throttle, which luckily at this point, all I have to do with my throttle is throttle back on land. So that should be. Um. Oh boy. I'm just shy of 30,000. 30,000 palms? Good god! You have 30,000 palms? Holy crap! I thought you said like 5,000! Most modernists, how many do you have? Yeah, I don't know because I get an infinite number. Like, I, I can do it forever. Like, I can just do this. Uh, 29,936. Like, I can just... I, I can just spam all of my... Uh, channel point stuff. Uh, I could just... I can do that. Like... I can do it forever. At like 10k? Oh my god, I need to adjust these prices. Yeah, no, there's a reason why I set a maximum. <laughs> it means you, if you want to see me do that, you're going to have to keep coming back. <laughs> you're going to have to be here and support the stream more than one day. <laughs> Which, I mean, in fairness, you have to anyway in order to earn those points to do it. But, 
<laughs> um, that's that's. Ooh, I don't I don't want you to finish that community goal because <laughs> it is not easy to control this entire sim mouse and keyboard. Uh, there may be some realisms that go by the wayside that day. <laughs> Oh god, I wonder... Oh, I don't even want to think about that. I don't want to finish that thought. I'm so mad that I thought that thought. But I wonder if it would be possible for me to control the aircraft with my drawing tablets. That that has me heckin' concerned that that's going to be my next duty goal. And I don't like it. I don't want it. Why do you guys do this to me? Because you're doing it to yourself, Iraq. What all? Uh, that's gonna wind up being something that we have to do. I'm I'm not looking. Oh, by the way, I am also on the YouTube's. I don't have a command for it yet because um, I haven't gotten all the. I haven't ticked all the boxes to get myself a um, a custom URL. So um, I have to like manual link it because I don't want to make it stick around yet. Uh, so. I get this big ugly link. That's my link. And I'm trying to get all the stats required to make it not big and ugly like that. But that takes a little time. And right now what I'm doing is I'm uploading all of my old bots. Um, I have everything that I'm going to release planned for the next month. Uh, and it's a mix of older content and newer content. I think the next two weeks are very recent. And then after that, we go back to, I think, July. But, um, so by that point, some of those flights that we did, they may be new content to you. Um, so they may be worth, worth watching again. Uh, but once I run out of that backlog of old streams, I plan on uploading them on a regular basis, the same, you know, in lockstep with what we what we streamed. That way, if you're not capable of being here on the day of the stream, at the time of the stream, you can always watch it again after the fact. And I will try my damnedest to answer any and all questions and comments that appear on my video. Um, however, it would help me in the long run and the short run if even if you're not really interested in re-watching it, even if you were here on the day and enjoyed my conversation and our experiences at the time, it would help me if you would go to that channel, subscribe, watch all the videos, even if you even if you wind up like muting the tab and just letting it play until the video is done, uh, that helps with the YouTube algorithms. Uh, I do release a new video every Friday, uh, so I, I do it at twelve fifteen a.m. my time, so that's UTC minus five, I want to say. So, um, anytime after 12, 15 a.m. Uh, UTC minus 5 on Friday, you should be able to watch my stream go live. And, or, not live, uh, but be launched, be released. And I will try as soon as I possibly can to respond to any comments. Comments help me. Likes help me. Subscriptions help me. Even just views help me. So um, that will help me with the YouTube algorithm. Anything you guys can do to help. Um, it's greatly appreciated. This is how we grow, right? We, we cross-promote 
and we we try to gather people from both communities follow them into one big overarching umbrella and this is how we get stronger and i'm able to do cooler things for you guys i would love to be able to do things like you know sponsorships and giveaways so that i can give you guys back stuff for all the love that you have given me for the last like two years i have been streaming as an affiliate for uh i want to say a year and a half now and i cannot wait until we get to the point where i can give you guys something back uh, that's that's really where I want to get to is being able to give back to you guys without just breaking myself. Um, you know, if I never become big enough to sustain myself off of what I do here, that's fine. I can live with that. But I want to give you guys back something for everything you guys have done for me. I want that so bad. And um, right now I haven't been able to do that. And that's sad for me. Um, but this is how we beat that. This is how we get to that point. Right? Is by tying in YouTube. Tying in, you know, Instagram. Which I have an Instagram as well. Um, I am... Iraq ATK at, uh, on Instagram as well, I think. And I have posted a few things. Yeah, Iraq ATK on Instagram. I've posted some screenshots from uh, Microsoft Flight. I need to make more. That's why I haven't made a command for it yet. Because I, I need to make more. And I plan to make more. I just haven't done it yet. Um, I've also been having some issues with uh, taking screenshots in X-Plane 11. I don't know why. Captures just don't want to work right. one works correctly. That one works correctly. Oh, sweet. I got that one with the light on. Perfect. Oh no. Oh no, I lost it. No! Hey, those are all seeming to work. Maybe something's been updated. I don't know. But yeah, let's see. Let's take a look at our eats. E. Light. Light. Looks like 49 minutes, so probably an hour and 15 minutes until we land. But yeah, um, so essentially the reason why I want to grow is for you guys, and that sounds stupid and like I'm lying, but I'm not. That is legitimately what I want for you guys.
Thank you for flying Iraq Attack Air, flying the saltiest of the skies for all your travel needs. Oh, I didn't play our clip! I'm gonna play it now. Y'all don't mind. I'm gonna play it now. Alright, I'm gonna mute myself for like six minutes while I play this. Since very little of what that video tells you will actually save your lives, I'm going to do it instead. Here's the big thing to remember. If we crash or make an emergency landing, statistically speaking, 95% of people will survive. If it's a serious crash, 55% of people will survive. So if this plane is going down, concentrate. Because your life may depend on some smart decisions. Keep in mind that 80% of accidents happen within the first 3 minutes and the last 8 minutes of flight. So that's when it would be wise to keep your shoes on and put your laptops away and stay focused. The safest seats on this plane are over the wings closest to the emergency exits. If you're not in one of those right now, here's what you can do to help ensure your survival. Look where your nearest exit is. Now count the rows between you and that exit. If the cabin was full of smoke, or upside down, or full of smoke and upside down, how would you get to that exit? Take a moment to visualize yourself doing that right now. Now look at your seatbelt. I know all of you know how to use it, but that's because nothing is making you lose your shit right now. It's common for people in your stress situations to try and open that thing by pressing a button that's not actually there, like a seatbelt on your car. So take a moment to imagine yourself lifting that flap in an emergency. In fact, do it right now just to get used to the motion. Emergency evacuations on the runway are more common than crashes. In the event of something like an engine fire, we need to get you all off the plane in about 90 seconds. This means you need to leave your fucking bags in the overhead bins and get off the damn plane in a quick and orderly manner. Those bags will bring the evacuation to a virtual halt. My first officer and I will be trying to get off this plane and the last thing we want is to be cockpit blocked by your roll-off. Now, you're probably well aware there's a life jacket under your seat, but forget about it. They're less likely to save your life than those little airline pillows. Sure, there was a famous 2009 emergency water landing on the Hudson, but there were boats on hand immediately and nobody actually needed the life vests. There was a flight that ditched in the Caribbean in 1970 where 40 lives were likely saved by the vests, but there was also one off the coast of Ethiopia in 1996 in which many passengers put them on too early and couldn't get out of the flooded fuselage. To put it another way, if we replaced those life vests with a box of chocolates, it wouldn't alter your survival odds. Let's take a second to talk about those oxygen masks. Here's the thing. If we lose cabin pressure at a fairly low altitude, no big deal. You can breathe just fine. If we lose cabin pressure at cruising altitude, you can't. If that happens, Here's what I'm required to do by law. I'm going to push the nose of the plane into an emergency descent. It's going to feel like a roller coaster drop, and it's going to scare the crap out of me. But it's not dangerous. I practiced. Also by law, I need to notify air traffic control as well as the airline, and I need to do all that before I can get on the microphone and tell you what the hell is going on. So don't be surprised if you don't hear from me for a bit. I'm just doing my job, and you're going to be fine. For those of you who don't manage to get your masks on in time, you'll probably pass out and then wake up in a minute or two when they get the plane to a lower altitude. You want to know what the biggest danger is? The biggest danger is actually that your luggage or those duty-free bottles you purchased to put in the overhead compartment will fall out when you open it and hit someone on the head. There are actually several thousand reported injuries from this every year in the United States alone. By contrast, the FAA only reports 58 or so serious injuries from turbulence. So one could easily make the case that we should, we should be handing you a helmet and skip the seatbelts. Another big risk is the drink cart. Seriously. 
It weighs over 100 kilos when fully loaded, and every year, passengers get their elbows, knees, and feet broken when the drink cart slams into them. So keep your arms and legs tucked away. Why haven't airlines put some safety padding on the drink cart? I don't know. Maybe because you keep screaming at the attendants for your chicken being bland, or your drink not being bland. Same goes for spill-proof coffee in teapots and cups with lids. Every year, some poor passengers get hot coffee or tea in their crotch when there's a bit of turbulence, but until the airlines fix this, I'm afraid you're on your own. Now, you're probably wondering how can this bucket of bolts stay in the sky if we can't get the AV system or the latch on your tray table to work properly. So to be honest, we sometimes wonder that as well. But the stats speak for themselves. The actual risk of dying in a plane crash is 1 in 11 million, according to the Harvard School of Public Health 2006 study. So you're far more likely to be struck by lightning or killed by a shark. And it's certainly much safer than driving. Right after 9-11, many were scared to fly. 12 to 20 percent fewer people flew. But because more people made driving trips instead of flying, a German professor estimated that an extra 1,595 people died in car accidents in the year after 9-11, just in the U.S. Just a little reminder that we'll probably keep the seatbelt sign on for nearly the entire flight because our flight crew doesn't want to be bothered in the galley and they definitely don't like trying to squeeze by you in the aisles. That or I forgot. Either way. Anyway, please sit back and relax while we take forever to serve you a drink and a barely editable meal, and then leave the tray on your table, making it nearly impossible for you to squeeze out of your chair and into the toilet. Looking forward to flying the salty skies with you again. Alright, and that was our safety brief. Bitch. Hot. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out how to make this work. Maybe, maybe it's because I'm on the wrong make loop. Well, I can. Uh, so, locks. Lots to constraint. Right level 220. Post that. Be able to put this in here works. Guys. I don't. Any of you do know what I'm doing wrong?
Um, so I'm trying to enter uh, altitude constraints. It's like my my uh, flight I'm doing. A altitude constraint at M locks. Uh, flight level two two zero. So I should be able to hit this and do an altitude constraint 220 at M lock, speed constraint 300. Or actually, I should be able to figure that out because I, I don't have a speed restraint. But it's not revising the flight plan to include that flight level 220. And I'm not sure why. Mm. Uh, not accept. I'm doing Mito to Tush. Basically, I'm doing the Foch 6 arrival. Uh, this takes me to Mito, and then I go to Tatouche, uh, Putip, Vancouver. Um, or no, pardon me. No, here it is. Um, on the Kazdi 7 arrival. Which takes me to Tatouche, MLOX, Kasdi, Ermix, Vancouver, and then manual out until I can uh, line up with Noxob Borig. But for some reason, it's not accepting my altitude constraints here. And there's only like five miles between YVR and Noxob. There's no way I can dump 27,000 feet that fast. But it's not accepting my altitude constraints and calculating my descent path. Definitely should be. Grab our Metar real quick. Alt or altimeter two niners. Nines. Temperature is fifty. Winds are two four zero at sixteen, gusting twenty two. Ooh, okay. At a little higher decision height. I want Mito to be. Mito should not be my. I'm only doing that in my bin. I don't want that to be Mito. <clears throat> the only thing I can think is that it it. It's dead set that that's part of crew.
just trying to get into lateral. Uh. Oh, it's still not. Still not working. I'm reading through Okay, well, we're just going to have to eyeball it. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to eyeball it. So let's see. We need to drop 8,000 feet. I'm going to start 30 miles. 30 miles from tow. Popcorn. 
Why do you do this to me? Why do you hate me? Am I not... Am I not dealing with enough today? Are you not entertained? Actually, probably not. That's fine. That's fair. <clears throat> oh! Deem stretch. Sorry. Here we go. Move my, uh... Oh. My mic so that you guys can hear all of the old guy groans and and uh, pops, shifting of all my joints in full stereosonic HD clarity and beautifulness. Okay. And we're back. Oh no, you didn't tell me it was cheesy dill. What might be? I love you too, but why do you do this to me? What did I do to deserve this? So I have no idea why everything is all brokey, why the lateral revisions don't work. Actually, I need to be in vertical revision, but I can't remember how to get That's pro that, that may be part of it. No, that is vertical revision. Okay. Oh, I don't want to be at flight level 300. The whole point. at flight level Thousand by Noxo. 
Basically, I'm just going to hit 22,000 by toe, and then I'm going to go straight down to 3,000. That's my plan. Once I cross toe, I'm going to go straight down to 3,000. Actually, what's our track miles? Problem. My track miles. Knocks up. That's why it's having an issue. It's, it's sitting here and it's not getting the fact that I want to descend before toe. But down to two zero by toe. still calculating things down maybe that's gonna finish calculating and it's gonna run back up without and go oh I'm supposed to be at or below yeah there it goes okay now it's a 220 okay so do we have any other okay so now it's working we figured it out! Holy shit! Okay. Now let's look. For the Ron, uh, oh yeah. It doesn't have. You look at the approach plate. Or two. Hmm. Oh, of course it doesn't. Craig? saved now. I'll give us a little more time to drop. Mark, do I have a top of drop yet? Yes! I have a top of descent! Yes! Folks, folks, we did it. Did it? We beat X Plane. That's that's how you beat the game. Forever. Done. Need a fuel on board. Oh, oh, that's how much will be left, right? I was like, hold on a minute. Yeah, FOB. Wait. <laughs> I about panicked there for a minute. Alright, we definitely have our top of descent. I'm so happy. Okay, we beat it. We beat it, folks. This is how this is how you win. Winning. This is tiger blood. This this is how we do it. This is how we roll. This is how we fly. Uh everything is going flyingly until I remember that I have no throttle control. Deal with that when we get there. Literally, because um, we only deal with the throttles again when we're 20 feet over the, the runway. 
And it starts yelling mean things at me because it doesn't like me. So I was going, retard, retard, retard. And I'm like, but that's mean. Why would you call me that? And of course we're flying into a 131 knot headwind. No wonder this flight is taking forever. Although it's a good thing because it took me forever to figure out uh, that, that vertical revision. Um, it just did not want to work the way I was trying to put it in. I think what I was doing was I was accidentally telling it that I needed to be at or above. And it's like, yeah, 300 is above a rack. Like, yeah, but I need you to be at 300. Or I need you to be at 220 or below. And it's like, yeah, but 300 is above. Yeah, that's why I need you to be at 20 or below. So, you didn't tell me that. But I did. You didn't. I'm talking about a rack. I just. Uh. Don't need to be. At 220 there, I need to be at an M launch. Uh, as these. Uh, who should I have no restriction? It's at M locks. I need to be at 220. Okay, that looks good. And then we drop 4,000 feet between Ermix and Mark. 4,000 is saved. Another almost 1,000. So, 500 to the top. Perfect! Okay. Okay, we fixed it! I'm so happy. Oh my god. And here I thought we were bored. There was no way. But nope, we got it. We're all good. Okay. <clears throat> We're two and a half hours in with a 132 knot headwind. Ground speed's only 337. Folks, this is a long flight. <laughs> this is a long flight, and at the end of it, on air might just kick all the data out and be like, nah, B, you're, you're still at Denver. And I'm going to be like, oh, please don't do this to me on air. I would very much appreciate if you didn't. That would be that would be very nice to not have that happen. Luckily, today we haven't flown over any uh, airports that are using uh, my current radio frequency as uh, ATIS. <laughs> That's always fun. Uh, we also haven't hit any outer marker uh, warnings. <coughs> that we shouldn't have. Of course, I don't think we even hit one on the way out of Denver, did we? At least I didn't hear it. I haven't killed it. See right here, the outer marker's on. Should hear a beep, 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 beep. We're so close, folks. We're right here. We're on our way. Oh, I'm so proud of us. But yeah, if you if you guys play Among Us, hop in the Discord. Let me know. Uh, if I know you, then I'll try and get you immediately into the Discord for playing Among Us. If uh, I don't know you, then I will ask them about whether or not to invite you because it is not my group. It is another person's group that I joined. Um, right now, it's relatively small, but it'd be nice to have more people so that we don't have to have so many people online at the same time. And more people get more games whenever they want them, instead of just when we happen to all be online. Because right now, I think we've got, like, I want to 
A12 or 13 members. And they are all over the world. Um, it's not just everyone in America. We do have at least one Brit and at least one Polak. Well, I say Polak. That's that's actually insulting. It's actually a slur, but most Polish people don't care. I'm supposed to call them Poles. This is where I get in trouble, right? Because I got a, I, I got, I got my Polish friend, and apparently, uh, yeah, there's one Canadian as well. But Canadian, you're gonna have the same time zones as American. That's why I didn't list it specifically um because i was talking about like different parts of the world where you have different um, ironically america has more time zones than canada does because we have hawaii and uh i'm not sure if alaska has its own time. we may have two extra Yeah, we do have very widely varying skill levels. Um, it doesn't matter. We still have fun playing. Uh, we have taught plenty of people how to play. We are still teaching. Oh, no. Which water on my tablet that I'm currently at with? Yeah, so we're almost there, guys. Um, we're 126 miles from... Uh, oh. <coughs> and then we're just... We're just right there. We're right in. Of course, if I threw in speed brakes, we could probably divert right now and go straight in. But this is probably a noise abatement procedure. Is my guess. Not phone. Why? I told you not to talk to me about that. Why you do this to me? Yeah, it looks like we're probably going to be coming in in about three and a half hours for this stream. Which, I, I, I appreciate this one being a little longer because I did miss last week. Um, <clears throat> I'm not fond of getting sick. Nobody is, but I, I especially hate it when it takes my voice. It makes it impossible for me to stream. And I feel bad because I can't, like, give you guys a free week on your description, right? Like, all I can do is just make more content, but if I try and immediately make more content once I'm back to being able to make it, I'm just going to relapse. You know what I mean? Like, I'm kind of doing right now. My, my, you might be able to tell my voice is getting scratchy. And... Um... So, that's definitely not helping, but, you know, if the flight was going to go over anyway, and if I was going to make this flight tonight anyway, which I definitely was, I have to get this, I have to get this route done. Otherwise, I lose $10 million. That's a lot of money to lose, but we're in a recession. Wanna Air cannot survive without our $10 million. We need our monies. And in case you're curious, I talk about the virtual airline. It's owned by a uh, popular streamer named Wanna. He is currently live, but I would ask, please, please, Finish out watching my my stream before we go to him. I'm I'm gonna raid him tonight. So uh, please please finish watching mine before we go to his. Um, I would very much like. It. <coughs> uh, 
kind of do some other views. I like all these fluffy white clouds here. These clouds look a lot better than they used to. They still don't look as good as Microsoft Flight's clouds. But they do look a lot better. When we do go to raid one i just want to be clear to everybody he is not like he's not like a professional like sim person so he's learning getting into it i'm learning i i, I feel like we're all always learning right so i i suppose i should drop that we're all learning I'm learning, but I am trying to be as system and procedurally accurate as I can be. And I am a lot further along in that process than he is. I don't know how far he wants to go into being really correct. Um, he's having a lot of issues with flight planning. Um, so when we go to his channel, don't expect the same level of, of, of realism that you get here. Just like if you go out in the, if you're a real pilot, don't come here and expect me to be systems perfect. I'm, I'm not. I'm learning as I go. I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm fairly confident in myself. I would definitely not be confident in flying the real plane unless there was literally no other option. Like if, if it's, if it's we land, if, if it's we fly until we run out of gas and fall, then, or or I fly the plane, then I would feel like I had to fly the plane. I'd be very nervous, but I'd probably be better at it than somebody who's never been in the cockpit before because I do at least know where most, if not all, of the controls are. And I do vaguely know how to control the plane. Now, I'm not going to know how it feels. Um, there's probably going to be some some automation steps that are going to surprise me. And that's going to be dangerous. But versus the certainty of it running out of gas and falling out of the sky, I'm pretty sure I'm better than nothing. Um, I definitely don't think that it would be totally safe. Um, at all. I think that it would be safe enough. Probably. Um, I think that we would probably all survive. I think I would land super hard. Even though I've gotten some really good landing rates, by the way. Uh, I think I saw some, like, 60s and 30s in there, which I'm really proud of. I have not... So, I, I, I need to enter all the data from, from this month into my spreadsheet. Because I have a spreadsheet that tracks all my landing rates and my progress, whether I'm getting better or worse. I feel like I've been getting a lot better now that I've been flying more and getting used to landings, feeling more confident and... You know, particularly in my flares. Um, Microsoft Flight did do a number on my numbers. I don't think that it helped. Um, because the flight profiles, the flight dynamics of these planes are absolute. Um, for instance, uh, I was on landing 
can't remember where I was. It's one of the landing challenges, but I was in the A320neo, and um, I advanced the throttle just a little bit to try and get a little more distance out of my landing to kind of shallow out my descent. And the plane rose, the, 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 the plane's indicated airspeed rose by like three knots. And my altitude rose by 1,200 feet. Almost instantaneously. With my nose still pointed down. And that, that doesn't make sense. I, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that is how the real, real plane flies. If you fly an actual A320, let me know if that's real. I don't feel like it is. And I wish I'd been recording. Actually, I may have been, but it, I think it's... But, um, you know, that that's something to consider. That, that's a concern that I have. Is um, that I lost a lot of my skill while I was playing MF. Because honestly, you play F MFS, you simulate, you simulate an expert. Um, once PMDG has their 7.3 out, <clears throat> which I'm told is probably not that far away, probably, what, three, four months? Once PMDG has their, their 7.3 out, we'll have something to have something that's, that's really study, study level. Um, now, what I'll be waiting for is the first Airbus. Because I do not like Boeing, and Boeing does not like me. <laughs> it's not that they make bad planes, except for the Max 8. But um, it, it's not that they make bad planes, it's just that I don't like their style. I don't like the way that they fly. Um, they're overly complicated to me. They don't know what I'm doing. And that's in part just familiarity. I could probably get there. <clears throat> With an accurate enough checklist and enough systems understanding, I could probably do it. The problem that I would have then is that I would get worse at the Airbus. And I don't want to get worse at the Airbus. I like the Airbus. But that's where I want my skill to go. I don't want to get a little bit better at something that I don't particularly want to fly long term. And in exchange, get worse at something that I do want to fly. It's not that... <laughs> yeah, it's not that Boeing makes bad planes except for the Max 8. Too soon. Look. It will always be too soon. There were hundreds of people who lost their lives because of the Max 8. And those accidents were not truly accidents. There were people responsible and nobody's been held accountable for them. And that is an absolute travesty. Um, there is some evidence that the chief engineer had a report from their test pilot that said that uh, if they if they used MCAS in the configuration that it was currently in, it would be a death trap. And from what I've heard, um, <clears throat> the chief engineer did not even read the report and greenlit the plane. Now, on top of that, um, I think some blame also belongs with the FAA. I think a lot a lot of responsibility lies with the FAA because it has a lot to do with type ratings um, because in order for a pilot's type rating to ma be maintained there's, certain, uh, there's a certain checklist of things about the plane that has to be unchanged right but has to fly significantly like it the controls have to be in the same positions you can have a certain amount of missing controls or added controls, but once you get past a certain percentage point of things being moved, changed, altered, added, or subtracted, or the flight dynamics change a certain amount, they have to redo everything. They have to, they have to make it a new type, and the pilot needs a new type rating. Now, with the uh, <clears throat> Max 8, what they did is they moved the engines forward. So that they, because they couldn't drop them anymore to make them bigger. So what they did is instead of dropping them down below the wing further 
to make a bigger engine. They just shoved them forward of the wing. And the problem with that is that means that when they thrust, it's going to create a slight pitch up. So it's going to make them bring the nose up. So a person who's flying the plane, if they, for instance, get into a low speed stall because they're too far pitched up, they're going to add power and nose down. But if they, if they're not expecting that engine torque to force them into a nose up situation, then their nose down input is just going to make them fly straight. So the, the, the thrust is going to take too long to kick in and they're going to stall and fall out of the sky. Um, so they created this, uh, this, this uh, maneuvering system. Uh, I think it's Maneuvering Controls Augment System, MCAS, that... Um, when it detects a low speed stall with too much angle of attack with the nose up, it just pitches the nose down significantly. It keeps trimming down so that the plane flies largely the same way the Max 7 did. And this was enough to appease the, AA, the FAA. But. There's two reasons why I, I, lay, I lay blame on Boeing for it. One is because <clears throat> they didn't... So, let me be clear. So, for one, a lot of pilots did not know the system existed. Because everything else was largely the same and they didn't receive enough training. I don't know whether I lay that at the blame of the, uh, that blame at the feet of the airlines or Boeing. But here's the thing. When I have to make sure that I, I, I try and speak as clearly as I can and not slander anybody. But um, so the way that the plane determines whether or not it's in a stall is it uses something on the nose called an alpha vein. And I think that is... I don't know if I even have them, honestly. I think these are all pedo tubes. Um... But the, the alpha vein looks largely the same. Actually, this one may be an alpha. Uh, there, there should be two alpha veins that determine uh, the angle of attack. It determines the, the difference between the course of the nose and the plane, right? So the plane is pointed in one direction. The, no, the, the, the plane is moving in one direction, but pointed in another. The angle of attack, attack tells you vertically how much difference is between the two, right? Okay. So... Um, in military aircraft, in military 737 MAX 8, it does determine the angle of attack by pulling both alpha veins, and if they agree that it's in a low speed stall with the nose up, it noses down. But in the commercial versions, that's a paid option. Otherwise, it uses only the captain's side. Now, if it's only using the captain's side, this is what happened with Lion Air. There was a problem where they had a faulty left pilot side alpha vein. I think it was pilot side. Um, they had a faulty reading from that alpha vein, and since there was no other, was not pulling data from the other alpha vein, it didn't disconnect it. It just continued to try and pitch down. And that's why the pilots kept trying to pitch up, and then the plane would pitch them down, they would pitch up, plane pitches down. They didn't know that MCAS existed, so they didn't know how to turn it off. <clears throat> <clears throat> and realistically, MCAS should have detected that both alpha veins, it, it should have been pulling from both alpha veins and detected that they were not in agreement and 
disconnected and allowed the pilots to fly the plane. Um, ultimately, the last line, uh, and, and this is this is another issue that I have with Boeing. Right, Boeing's design philosophy has always been to keep the pilot as <clears throat> the main controller of the aircraft. Everything defaults back to the pilot. Um, and it does nothing without letting the pilot know exactly what it's doing. It, you know, you can see whenever it's adjusting trim, you see the trim wheel spin. If it adjusts the, the thrust, you see the thrust levers move back and forth. If it adjusts the course, the roll or the pitch, you'll see the yoke move, the stock move. It's very good about communicating with the pilot, making sure the pilot is involved in the entire process of flying the plane. Okay? But suddenly with MCAS, if it detects a low speed nose up stall, MCAS takes over and switches it into kind of a pseudo fly by wire situation where you're telling the plane what to do and then the plane is determining the best way in which to do it. Right? It all of a sudden takes that control and, and it quietly behind the scenes starts adjusting things. Now, I mean, obviously you can still see what it's doing because those, those trim wheels start spinning because it's trying to pitch down. But you don't know why it's doing that. There's no notification on the, on the FMA. At least I don't think there was. Um, and even if there was, they don't know how to, to disable it. They don't know how to disengage it. So what do you do? Why did Boeing decide to suddenly switch from this very person-oriented control scheme that has been their design philosophy for the last 50 years and suddenly go, eh, you know, I think we can just go with this fly-by-wire thing we saw from Airbus and just kind of quietly shove it in there and that's how we're going to be now. I don't know why they decided to do that. I don't know why that was okay. I mean, to to suddenly switch the complete design philosophy of the plane, that definitely should have triggered a need for a new type rating. To have this system that can suddenly take the control completely away from you and just do whatever it wants. That should have, that should have required a new type rating. But instead, it's specifically how the Max 8 main and its type rate. Which is all because the airlines don't want to have to send all their pilots back to be retrained so that they can use the Max 8. And that's why I say that this, in part, is owed to the FAA. I don't think that... I don't think the Boeing deserves all the blame. I don't think the airlines deserve all the blame. I don't think the FAA deserves all the blame. I think they all share the blame. But... I think that somebody needs to hold the fucking bag. Because right now, nobody has seen... Nobody has seen the inside of a jail cell. Nobody has paid for, for, for the damage. Like, it's just... Like, the mentality is just, well, uh, some planes crashed, and, it, you know, we'll fix it. Oopsie. Like, that's, that's the mentality. It doesn't make any sense. This man too. There's me. Not sure where the airport. <clears throat> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be swinging around. Oh, we need to start dropping down to thousand five hundred. All right, let's take a look at our checklist. Oh. Uh, lightning elevation set auto. 
here, and it is, it always is. Uh, make two arrivals is completed, performance approach is completed. Top of descent wins, oh, we didn't do that. I don't think we can now either. That's fine, uh, I'm not gonna worry about it. Uh, okay, speed break, speed break half as required, which we're not gonna need. Altimeter set Q and H, that's gonna be at 18,000 feet. So we've got another 11,000 feet drop until that becomes relevant. By the way, one thing I would like to see, um, and this is about Twitch, this is not about Flight Sim, this is not about, um, not about Flight Sim, it's not about on air, this is about, it's not about Boeing or Airbus, uh, this is about Twitch. Hey Twitch, guys, if anybody on Twitch is listening, not people on Twitch, from Twitch, anyone from, Twi from Twitch is listening, um, can we get some enforcement in the Flight Sim community? Because um, right now, it's a totally lawless situation. You've got people that are playing X-Plane in the MFS directory. You've got people that are doing um, ATC in ATC programs. Like, they're doing ATC for, um, like, Batsim. And they're streaming in the MFS category, even though what they're doing has nothing to do with MFS. Um... I definitely think there should be a category for things like that, but I don't think that it should be MFS. Uh, it's diluting the categories, and it's emptying the categories like X-Plane. Like, like X-Plane's category has been dead because people who are playing X-Plane are streaming to the MFS category because the MFS category has more people in it. And I don't think that this is ideal for any of us. This hurts X-Plane, this hurts MFS... Hurts everyone except for the individual stream. And I'm not... I'm not okay with that. I'm not happy with it. So, Twitch, if we if we could get some enforcement, it, it, it it's hurting people. Like, it, it hurts the people that are streaming properly, and it helps the people that are breaking the rules. Um... Back in the day, Twitch used to actually enforce this stuff, but they have not been doing it. So, we could get a round of, hey guys, can you get into the right directory? Because um, how people find you right now, they're finding, it's even it, like it's hurting Microsoft, right? Because people show up looking for MFS and they see X-Plane, well, X-Plane does not look anywhere near as good. So, um, that's hurting Microsoft. If you're hurting Big Daddy Microsoft, I don't think Big Daddy Microsoft is going is to be very happy about it. I'm just saying. Uh, kind of like, another thing they had was for a while, and they finally fixed it now. Um, but, X-Plane 11 had the, the automatic tags of like stealth and strategy, real-time strategy. And I'm like, that's, who decided these things? Drunk constraints. Hermix at 12,000. Something I put in or they put it. Seven back to casting. Plus M below then by the R vortex to radial two four nine and then to radial zero seven one. Cross Ermix, 12,000 or below, cross Ermix, 250 knots. Oh, 
Mix 12,000 or below. Speak link to vibes. Um, expect radar vectors to, to final approach course. Do not expect lower than 8,000 until east of the YVR vortex. Okay, so YVR 8,000. Also, welcome back, YV. Sorry I didn't respond to that immediately. I was in the middle of my rant, and I hope you didn't miss too much that you cared about. Go ahead and dial this in a little bit. 250 knots, 12,000 feet or below. Ooh. Might need a speed break. I have to do a med run upstairs. Fair enough. Crossed 18,000 feet. On. Grab our current ATIS. 2 niner 8 feet. Thousand or below. Got five miles and four thousand feet to drop. Down a bit. Pardon me. <coughs> yeah, this is going to be a pilot deviation. Was a deviation plus three thousand feet. Go ahead and reach that. Okay, motor is set, landing lights on at twelve thousand feet. That in for a bit. I've never actually flown this approach. I have flown into uh, Vancouver like probably seven times this past week. I've never come in this particular way. Go ahead and put in flaps one.
There's Vancouver International. That's where we're going to be landing. Six left, so we're going to be right here. At 11,000 feet. Down to eight thousand. What is going on? He's on. Belts on. You know, I suppose we do have a decent amount to go, but damn. do real quick once we cross YVR Fly heading eight. I'm going to try and avoid all this wonkiness of swinging out past it. I'm going to try and fly until we're basically abreast of saved. And then I'm going to turn into it. By the way, uh, temporarily, I am going to put all of the uh, channel points on hold until I'm landed. Uh, which means I probably won't uh, do anything with them until next time unless it's the guide the raid. Mmm. So, um, but yeah, because I just can't get up and stretch my legs or go get water while I'm supposed to be landing. It's going to put on auto brakes low. Still descending super hard. We're almost back in line with our descent path, though. Back on. Probably. I'm going to track that and even arm it. Me. Oh, it looks like we're gonna have two worth. I'm gonna make up for last week. Four hours of flight. I think if I turn in now. Thanks, X Plane. Yeah, 
There we go. And now we're going to calculate it into saved. We're going to make that approach look a lot nicer. Okay. But nope, we're going to. And we're going to let it calculate our descent, which means it's going to nose up a bit, I bet. A bit, I bet. Fine, you're fine. Going back down. Relax. Plane. Plane. Okay. Okay. Relax. Why is this thing not slowing down more? I've had to have the speed break in an awful lot. Turn on our LS. Go ahead and arm approach. Arrow roll? No. Only at like, what's that? Probably 40 degrees? This is a pretty normal bank. I know it doesn't feel like that when you're inside the, the aircraft, but um, pretty standard turns. All right, flaps two. Flaps three. Captured the glide slope. Set this to 5,000 feet for go around. Auto brake is set. Ground spoilers are armed. That's 3 EM all green, which isn't going to matter really until we hit 2,000 feet. lights are on go ahead and turn on our runway turnoffs and our taxi lights what wasn't uh pretty standard is how long i had to have the speed brakes in um that was a bit much also i have confirmed you can barrel roll in a tolis but you should not barrel roll in a toll i might do it someday for the meme i can make it like 10,000 channel points, or tw no, I'd have to make it a lot. It'd have to be like 40, 50,000 channel points. It would have to be worth a lot. Yeah, the passengers would definitely not appreciate it. Actually, in a real aircraft, uh, the engines would die. Unless you were really going like a bat out of hell. If you could manage to proper barrel roll to keep the, uh... Yeah, I am carrying cargo. It is just cargo. Like, if I could do the barrel roll such that the gravity, uh, relative to the, uh, belly of the plane remained, zero, remained one, you could do it. Drop our gear... Cabin calls. Here is locked. 707 prototype did a roll on its maiden flight. 
it would like I said, it would have to keep the gravity in the 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 gravity in the fuel tanks would have to remain above zero relative to it, you know, the bottom of the, the, well, that or it'd have to have very, very full tanks because otherwise the fuel pumps will come out of the fuel and with no fuel, engine stop. <clears throat> You definitely can't fly inverted. Not for long. Maybe the 707 used older turbojet, so it may not have mattered. They may have used something that wasn't quite gravity fed, like they may have used pressure fed um, tanks. I don't know. All right, so at about a thousand feet, I'm gonna take over. Now that everything is pretty much nominal, set for my throttle. Okay. Need F1? Oh yeah, it, he did that in, uh, in, I think, a military aircraft, if I remember correctly. Okay. Eyes up. About military, but I think it was we were in a private plane. I'm definitely not sure about that. Uh, sorry, I can't right now. Landing time log. Landed at Charlie Yankee Victor Romeo, Vancouver INTL. Okay, since I can't control my throttles, I'm gonna have to like stop it. Um, I'm gonna have to like stop it here. I'm going to have to just vacate the runway as best I can. This this does nothing. And now that I've stopped, I can't do that, but uh, yeah, this is not working. Uh, I can't, I can't I could do this. I probably should do. This. Okay. Give me a minute. <laughs> Back. Already going too fast. I'm going to just park here. That is a very fast turn.
Let's see how close we can get. Go down a bit. I think that should be just all right. Oh, ho, ho, ho. ladies and gentlemen, take a look at that. This is exactly where we were aiming to be. That is beautiful. Beautiful. All right, let's, let's. Oh, that, that I'm happy. Okay, crack flaps, which I don't think I did. Uh, disarm. If you start and master external power, or no, not extra. If you do, terrain on indie is off. Brake fan only if the brakes are hot enough, which they are not. They are hacking cool. Uh, okay, park brake on. Anti ice off. We never had it on. AP bleed on. Engine one and two master off. Um, taxi lights off. Engine uh, off, time logged. Can off. End of flight. Registered in on air company. Nose wheel, wing, having logo. Heat belts off. Lapse time. Stop. Stop. That was 3 hours and 24 minutes. Gate to gate. That's block time. Um, unfortunately, I forgot to stop this. So we were probably looking at three minutes of taxi time. So uh, three hours and 13 minutes of air time. Uh, seat belts are off. Fuel, uh, fuel pumps off. Um, transponder to standby. Nick Dew's dim. I'm not going to worry about dimming the mic. Brake fan off. It already is. Screen the aircraft. Okay, park brake is on. Adiers can be turned off. External lights all off. Uh, AP bleed. AP master. Emergency exit light. No smoking light. Batteries one and two off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Vancouver. It looks like uh, on air did count my flight. That's the hope. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, end of the stream. Thank you guys so much for being here. And you know what? I am not going to be long in the tooth about this because we are almost to the second right now. That's four hours. I'm on my way out the door. We are going to raid Juana. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic evening, and take care of yours. Bye-bye.